Hey, settle up, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. We're going to tackle some radicals and some rational expressions. And probably the main goal today, our major, major goal, is to be able to take an expression that's in radical form and convert it to exponential form, or just do the opposite. Take an expression that's what we consider an exponential form and convert it to radical form. So what exactly is the difference between the two? So let me give you something that's in radical form, maybe the cubed root of x squared. And if we convert that into exponential, it looks like this. Or maybe just the opposite. Maybe we have the expression 2a raised to the 5 fourths. And just to make it even crazier, we'll negate it. That's going to be 1 over the fourth root of the quantity 2a raised to the fifth power. And that's here we're converting it from exponential into radical form there. A few more examples just to kind of solidify which is each. All right, so we've got ourselves um, in exponential form. We're converting it into radical form. Now we're in exponential converting to radical. Or let's see, exponential converting to radical exponential converting to radical. So that's what we're going to work on today. Of course, we're going to sprinkle in some variables. And then we're also just going to blend blend it all together. Think about everything you've ever learned about exponents going back into Algebra 1. Um, so we've got this first rule here is what we call the product rule. So you're multiplying two expressions together, and we're just going to add those exponents. Or here we have what's called the quotient property of exponents. And we're taking one expression, dividing it by another. So we just simply subtract those exponents. And then up here, the third rule is called the power property of exponents. And you'll notice we're just multiplying those two powers together. Sometimes it's easy to confuse that first property with this third one. So see if you can notice the difference uh, as to when you want to add versus multiply. Okay, um, the fourth rule we got cooking here is kind of this idea of distributing the exponent to both the numerator and the denominator. Okay, our fifth property says anything raised to the zero power is one. And then the last one is how we handle our negative exponents. We're just going to reciprocate the base. And uh, we've done a really nice job with that the last couple of days. Okay, so let's rewrite the following examples in exponential form. All of these are currently in radical form. And a lot of times, we just want to be very intentional about some of our parentheses. There's an invisible 2 here. There's an invisible 1. So let's say we've got the quantity 3x raised to the 1 half. All right, let's do this. We've got parentheses with an invisible 1. So we could go, we've got the quantity 4x squared raised to the 1 third. Okay, over here, do, 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 let's go 4 and then in parentheses x to the 2 thirds. In fact, in that case, because it's just a monomial, we could just, we could really do this. The emphasis here is only the x is being raised to the 2 thirds, not the 4. The 4 is separate from that exponent. Okay, this next one. I'm going to break it into two steps. I'm going to rewrite it as 1 over x to the 5 fourths. And then we'll go x to the negative 5 fourths to pull it from the denominator to the numerator. All right, just the opposite now. These expressions are all currently in exponential form. And we're going to try to convert them, or rewrite them in radical form. Okay, so remember, this bottom number is your root. So let's do the fourth root of the quantity 6x to the third. If Now watch out for this. If someone wrote 6x to the third like this, they would not receive credit, right? So there's got to be a parenthesis around that group in order to be correct. Okay, in this case, the 8's on the outside, and then we've got the cubed root of x to the seventh. So there's the difference. Really focus in on, in this expression, we got parentheses, but in this expression, there are no parentheses, so only the x is being raised to the 7 thirds. All right, this next one. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to visualize my base, and then I'm going to flip it so that the 4x squared y cubes on the bottom. Now I can go fourth root. Let's put parentheses around that whole expression and raise it to the third power. Parentheses, very, very important there. The other option there, because your numerator is just a 1, what you may be able to do is say, okay, the, if you, let's say you did the fourth root of 1, that would just be 1. 
And then everything on the bottom would still be the same. So that's an equivalent option there. Okay, so now we're going to start to blend this with some of the, the rules that you did earlier in your math career. And the first thing here, we're, we're multiplying two terms with the same base. So all I'm going to do is add the respective exponents. And in this case, if I take my one half and I add my five halves, I'm going to get six halves, which is just a good old three. Notice the base didn't change. The base didn't change any step there. Similar idea in this next example. We're multiplying two expressions with the same base. So all we're going to do is go ahead and add those exponents. And you guys, of course, do have calculators here that are going to help you. Um, but I'm going to go old school for a second. And if I go 5 plus 3 fourths, I'm going to go a common denominator of 4. And that's going to make x to the 23 fourths. All right. Okay. Now we're going to use our quotient property. Notice we're dividing two terms with the same base. So all we got to do is subtract those exponents. Giddy up, giddy up. Let's go 3 to the 3 minus 1 fourth. I'm going to go old school. And that 3 right here is going to turn into 12 fourths. So I'm going to get 3 to the 11 fourths as my answer. Of course, if the directions wanted that in radical form, we'll just go fourth root of 3 to the 11th. And that's no problem whatsoever. Okay, in our next example, you'll notice we're dividing two terms with the same base. So all we got to do is subtract those exponents. How about that? We're going to sink our teeth into this bar. So we got the 3 sevenths minus the 4 fifths. I'm going to go common denominator of 35. So it's 15 over 35 minus 28 over 35. That's going to make x to the negative 13th over 35. In other words, 1 over x to the 13th over 35. Now, all that old school, you know, common denominator stuff, like I said, you guys are more than welcome to use your calculator there. Okay, this is an example of what we call the power property. In other words, you've got one power being raised to another power. So I'm just going to simply multiply those powers together. So it's going to be two-fifths times three. In other words, three over one, which makes four to the six-fifths. And if you wanted to, you could go fifth root of 4 to the 6. Same idea here in this next example. We're looking at a power raised to another power. So we're going to go ahead and just multiply. Okay. Just multiply them together. We could go 4 fifths times negative 3 over 1, which makes x to the negative 12 fifths. And then we'll rewrite that as 1 divided by x to the 12 fifths. All right. All we got to do is reciprocate that base, and that's going to make that exponent positive. All right, a couple of our big feisty bears. I think in these examples, what I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and like we've always done, let's visualize that base as a fraction, right? And the moment we flip that, we've got ourselves a positive exponent, which is equivalent to a square root. Now, in this case, we could do the big square root of the whole thing. And then start to do square roots of each individual expression. So we got square root of 16, square root of x to the 4th, square root of y to the 8th. And that's going to make 1 over 4x squared y to the 4th. And bada bing, bada boom, you're all done right there. Let's do something really similar here. Let's just put this over 1. The moment that we reciprocate that, That exponent is positive. We could do a big cubed root of the entire thing. And then we could just start to attack at one expression as, at a time. So we can go cubed root of 1. We can go to the cubed root of 27. We can go to the cubed root of x to the 12th. We can go to the cubed root of y to the 3rd. That's 1 over 3, x to the 4th, y to the 1st. And I don't know if you remember that sneaky little trick we shared with you the other night. That shortcut says, hey, all you got to do is take this 12 divided by the index. That's how I got my 4. Or take this exponent divided by the index, and that's how I got a 1 right there, that invisible 1. So that's a nice shortcut when you're dividing or simplifying those radicals. If we go back to the previous example, remember the index here is an invisible 2. Let me put these in here going back to the previous example. 
So now if we think about that same shortcut, all right, take this exponent divided by the index, that's how I got a two, or take this exponent divided by the index, and that's how I got that four. So that's a really nice shortcut to kind of speed up that process.